I have made many mistakes working on add-ons over the years. And today I want to do a video talking about those mistakes and what I've learned from those mistakes to improve my add-on development going forward. My first mistake, trying too hard to be an all-in-one add-on. I would create elaborate features for specific bosses, such as info frames, just to handle specific niche mechanics, only to find users would just go into DBM, turn it off immediately, and download a weak R for it anyway. So I had to tip it away from creating niche mechanics in DBM and focus on ones that were more evergreen and global, you know, things that actually make sense to do on every boss, you know, the kind of things they expect a boss mod to do, and steering away from things that users are just going to prefer weak ROs for. They don't expect DBM to do everything. They just expect to do the core essentials, you know, the features that every boss needs. And then they'll go to Wago and download weak ROs for those niche specific boss features instead. The next thing I had to learn was avoiding feature bloat. Just because it sounds like a cool idea doesn't mean it actually belongs in DBM. One such example is during Battle for Azeroth, I actually added a feature to the event sounds feature where so I would play custom music during Turtle World Quests. It was a cool feature and it was easy to add because the event sounds feature already supported you know, event handling for really putting events anywhere I wanted. But was it an evergreen feature? No. The feature didn't really make sense in a long-term sense whatsoever. So I had to realize that sometimes cool still doesn't belong in DBM. And it also applies to redundant features as well. Like even if the feature existed in DBM first, sometimes when it comes out better somewhere else, it makes sense to peel it out of DBM. Vanilla up until Wrath, there were no good boss frames that showed boss percentages on the side of your screen like over here on the right or whatever. But Cataclysm and Beyond, Blizzard added default frames. Actually, technically ICC as well to end of Wrath. In addition, many unit frames now support this as well, and they all support it much better than DBM did. So at a point, I made the executive decision. The boss health frame doesn't make sense anymore. It's not updated, it's dated, it's obsolete, and it has to go. The next thing I learned, and this was a harder lesson really, is that at the beginning of Battle for Azeroth, I had to step away from raiding. And that was highly public, as some of you know. For the next couple of years, the quality of uh, QA in DBM took a hit. Because I learned several valuable lessons when I wasn't raiding. And the number one is that users don't know when things are broken. It's not always apparent that something should work a certain way. I know how it's supposed to work, but if I'm not using the mod myself, and the users don't know what the mod's supposed to be doing, I'm not getting the feedback I need to fix these issues either. So I realized I had to return to rating in Mythic Plus because if I'm not using the mod myself, I can't evaluate that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And I also learned that even when users do know things are broken, they tend not to report it because there's still barriers in giving feedback, such as having to join the Discord or sign up for GitHub to open a ticket, going through hoops to report add-on issues. And even though this new add-on has literally millions of users, a bug can go unreported for sometimes weeks or months. I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. Something could be broken in an obvious way, or at least the way I would think was obvious, and not a single user either noticed it, or they did, but they didn't report it. So the valuable lesson I took from that is I had to return to rating. I also recognized that if users aren't bringing their feedback to me, I have to go to them to get the feedback. I started going to a lot of Twitch streams, YouTube videos, because I want to see how people are using DBM. I'll be lurking in streams sometimes for hours on someone doing Mythic Plus or Mythic Raid Prog because I want to see how they're using DBM and make sure it's working well for them or what their critiques might be. And I'll also ask questions in streams very often because taking this active engaging role towards users 
get some valuable feedback, and it has. One of the reasons the Mythic Plus mods have gotten so much better in DBM in recent uh, years is because of this approach I've taken to go in to get the feedback rather than just hoping it comes to me on its own. Another thing I had to learn, this is another big one, users often don't know a feature exists. And that comes down to multiple things. Number one, if it's defaulted to off, it might as well not exist at all because I found the majority of users run default settings, period. They just install the mod and run the mod. So if I add this really cool feature, but it's not on by default, they won't even use it. In fact, did you know that DBM has supported voice packs for over nine years? And you just didn't know that until I forced them into the mod by default. And the same thing with these other recent videos I, I've done, the notes feature that was also added like nine years ago. People today didn't know it existed because it's not something that's just configured for you by default out of the box. Voice packs now are, but there's still several features that aren't on by default for good reason. They, you know, they wouldn't be good defaults to the end user, but that really makes them hidden to the power users. And that's why I've taken measures such as creating the wikis and uploading several videos to this channel recently. A big part of improving this is just putting it out there and making it easier to find, easier to search when you type something into Google, because Google and YouTube work in tandem. I tried to optimize the SEO as much as possible just to make sure that if someone goes into uh, Google and types in, how do I set up my DBM timers? They're going to be taking that YouTube video I uploaded in the last week. The next one, this is a big one. I literally just did a whole video about this topic, so I'm going to be brief about it here. That DBM was one of many mods contributing to overstimulation of sound and causing players to get into this state where they're having to filter sound to parse information because it's gotten noisy. This is something I had to course correct on DBM. And one of those measures was creating alert variety and, re and cutting back on obnoxious repetitive sounds. So no more beware and run away little girl all over the place where you have bosses now that have like 12 mechanics and you have three sounds just playing over and over again. We're like, these five mechanics are using beware. This one mechanic is using run away and the rest of the mechanics are using uh, the PVP flag sound from Warsong Gulch. And it's like players are just they hear these sounds and they would tune them out. And that's why I took most, most of those sounds and just... They, they exist still for users that want them. But the default is voice packs because voice packs have hundreds of unique sounds. They can allow me to apply them with a wide variety of different audios on each boss. In addition to being less obnoxious and less loud. So that they just they are clear, they're concise. They're far less repetitive and overall more pleasant to listen to and as such, much more effective. But anyways, if you want to get even more about this topic, I talked about another video. I want to talk about one other change, though, that was applied to reduce spam and noise. And that's DBM's alert aggregation tech. DBM is the only mod that does this, by the way. But I have a feature in DBM that takes warnings of similar types categorizes them as you see here. Run away, dodge, dispel, incoming damage, you know, personal role, off interrupt. And what these mean is say you pull a large trash pull on a Mythic Plus. The abilities that are cast by these mobs are categorized in these categories. And what happens if two mobs cast a spell at the same time from the same category, or three mobs even, let's say you're in Waycrest mob, manner in that in the courtyard where a lot of those mobs all put swirlies in the ground at the same time any other add-on would play two or three sounds you know three eight three swirlies on the ground three alerts not dbm even would play one alert one for the swirly because it would say it would it would aggregate them together because they're in the same category but the reason it's categorized is because you don't want to over-aggregate. 
just a swirly in the ground, but a spell you have to interrupt, and a tank buster going off, you will get a different, uh, they will be in different categories. So you will get three alerts for three different mechanics. You just won't get three alerts for the same mechanic. That's just spam, and it's ineffective. And I take great pride developing this just to make sure that users have a better experience with sound and alert text, because it applies to both, and their dungeon and raid experience. DBM in the past was more spammy, but I would recognize this and learn from it. Anyways, these are the lessons that I have learned over the years. They're probably more lessons I forgot to talk about, but these are the main ones I can think about. And I hope you enjoyed this developer insight and the thoughts and processes that go into making this add-on for all of you. Please like and subscribe if you like hearing about these topics, you know, the analysis of game design, the coding that goes into DBM, the thought process of all of it, and how it's all put together, then you're going to love this channel. Thank you for watching.